对伯克。Gee, I know what you want to do. You don't you dare pounce on me. Hi guys. Well, let's get this camera sorted out first. Hi guys, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, I'm being stalked by a bus of cups. She's circling me like I'm a piece of uh, meat. Um, she's sat to figure a way to jump up on my knees. I'm sure she will in a second, yeah. Oh, okay, right. Now, this this is take ten. You do know that, eh? Got your lipstick on. Okay, we're good to go. Right. I'm sorry about last night. I tried to get this video up last night, and I got a problem. Um, there's a there's a corrupted file on the the video, and it would not. I got to seventy seven percent on YouTube, and it wouldn't let me load anymore. So I've had to redo this um, segment about all the video and most of the video again, and. Um, yeah it's very annoying i don't know which which file was corrupted so we just have to wing it and uh, see what we what we come up with but i'll try and get this video up later on um it's the 28th today monday the 28th um unbelievable um yes yeah, it's four hours i tried to get this video up last night and i give up in the end and decided to to do the intro again so this is where we are so let's start off, let's uh, start off, I'm going to take you down to the, well, what do we do? Let's show you what we've been doing. We've been clearing all the, the plot of all the leaves which has fallen on the tree, from the trees. Um, it started to look a bit untidy, so I got me, me rake out and, um, well, here's a few clips to show you what we've been doing. So this is buttercup chat, well, I'm uh, just scraping up all the leaves from underneath the trees. Yeah, it's going to take me a while to do this and uh, well as you can see buttercup's in the way but uh let's see if we can go a bit further no i can't oh there we can yeah we can so there we go i've cleared this side i've got to do the other side yeah i've got to, obviously i've got to bag these up and um i've just been taking the leaves out the top of these uh, planters again um got daffodils and tulips in all them planters along there so this is going to continue for for ooh, at least another three weeks there's still more leaves up there than i care to mention but um the only way to to deal with it is once a week i think and uh, now it's now it's start, i've been doing it starting to do that now so I clear this mess up here. I might, um, I could leave the leaves in this this bed here. It's, they serve no purpose at all leaving them there, though. So I might just, like I say, take these out as well. I'll just give them a bit of a tidy up. This bed's full of horse manure, and uh, in this bed as well, there's lots of tulips and daffodils. So they'll be coming up shortly. So um, anyway, <laughs> there's Buster Cup helping. As you can see, we've got most of the leaves out this side. Even took some out of this bed here. Not that they needed to, but I've done it. Got them all in here. I've got the other side to do yet, but I'm not feeling too good, so I'm gonna knock it on the head today. What I really need is wood chip. And uh, in fact, the old plot needs some wood chip on the path. As soon as that comes, um, the good stuff that is, and uh, I think uh, that's to be the, the the next job on the list. But uh, yeah, we've cleared all down the path there. Took most of the leaves off this side. Got the other side to do. So it's going to be a tale of two two days. This we'll be back tomorrow and do the other side. Hopefully. Anyway, um, I'm just going to tidy up them day lilies there right in the center of the picture and uh i'm knock it on the head for this side all the planters have all got the the leaves out the planters now not that it makes any difference because the tulips and daffodils are just pushed straight through them so but they're all starting to come up now this is the reason why we're doing it more important we've got to do the other side because of the um snowdrops anyway this is a, this is a, an ongoing process and uh, in a few 
few weeks time um, there'd be no leaves left at all not even one single leaf hopefully well day two and um, we've got to clear all the leaves and apples from underneath here I've got to be careful where I'm standing because a load of um, snowdrops under here I'll have to move that wheelbarrow in fact I'll probably put this bag in the wheelbarrow make it easier for me to move it eventually um, yeah, there's a lot of windfalls in there so what we're doing basically we're just clearing all of the leaves off the top uh, I will chop dress it with wood chip when it comes but um, right now I just want to get these leaves um, picked up and packed away leave them in this bag to rot down and stick them up there I think Anyway, I'm going to crack on. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Watch this space. Well, as you can see, we've cleared all the leaves from underneath there now. So all the snowdrops will be coming through shortly. I like to put a wood chip over the top of them though before I do before they do come up. Buttercup keeping out of the way. Um, got to get rid of them apples. Uh, they're too far gone to be eaten I'll put that bag down the back down there let them let the um, the winter do the stuff on the leaves and we'll put them in the compost bin I've got to tidy down there as well uh, get them leaves picked up and then uh, we're done here for now all these leaves are just gonna fall down again so we're not we're not in any rush to pick every last bloody leaf up but yeah we've got a big bag there to rot down into compost so uh, yeah that's where we're at at the moment I'll put my wheel back, wheelbarrow back in a bit and dispose of them <laughs> yeah never too far away is she so we've cleared all the paths underneath the trees all the way down here all the way down to the end well it's where we stopped here for today there's a bag of uh, leaves and what have you I'm gonna just fold it over the bag now put a few bricks on it weigh it down <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been supervised there Miss, Miss, Missy's supervisor watching every move I make she's got to be cold sat on that all places she could sit unbelievable right i'm going to cover this up and then we're done for now so we cleared all the leaves three days later we had probably the strongest winds we've had this year and all the leaves are back but uh, eventually we'll get rid of all the leaves and um we will compost them down and we use them on the plot later on next year uh, um, once all the leaves are off as well I have more idea of how I'm going to prune these trees because I've got to prune them back this year I did say I was going to do it last year but this year it's definitely going to really prune them back good and hard and hopefully next year um, we'll get a few apples at least but I wanted to clear underneath the trees anyway underneath where all the apple trees are because I've got a load of snowdrops underneath uh, I really really do need some um, wood chip um, none's, none's been dropped off for a while but as soon as the good stuff comes I'm going to be doing all my past but I think the first thing I'm going to do is um, the floor of my chicken pen which brings me on to the chickens right now um, I've got a few tips here um, what, what what you need in your pen um, this time of year and a few tips how to, how to save a dying chicken um, a few little insights into into look care of your chickens and um, let me show you start off by showing you the chickens Hi guys, well, here's a few tips for your chickens to keep them nice and healthy. Uh, obviously, food's important. Um, and worming your chickens is important as well. Um, and the easiest way to find out whether your worm, uh, chickens have got worms is um, when they, they lay the eggs. If they've got poop on the eggs, that means they've definitely got worms. And, um, you know, treat accordingly. I say a good staple diet I feed them um, plenty of um, egg layers pellets I do feed them 
believe it or not, cat meat, dog meat, uh, I feed them all different meats. I don't feed them chicken, obviously. Um, <laughs> but uh, other things important for chickens as well is grit. That's what they're chewing on there. There's a tray full of grit there. Uh, what they do, they put that into the gizzards and then they grind up the food in the gizzards and um, they use that to actually help them digest the food. Another important thing for egg laying chickens is egg layers uh, oyster shell, which is there. So these chickens have got the best of everything. They've got the um, oyster shell, they've got the, um, the grit, they've got food and water, obviously. Um, they're laying clean eggs. Um, it's a bit mucky in here at the moment because of uh, the weather keeps changing. I will be changing this floor shortly into a new floor and all this will go into my beds outside. It's well rotted down now. But, um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't believe she's just done a number two in that one, the dirty little bugger. But um, I'll scoop that out of there before we, we leave. But, yeah. Happy chickens lay lovely eggs. So a few tips there for you. So you notice there's, little, there's some grit there and they, they use the grit in terms to grind up the food in the gizzard, gizzard and it helps them to digest the, the food. So you need grit. You also need oyster shell. The oyster shell, they take the calcium from that to create the eggs. Um, speaking of eggs, if you've got any um, poo on the eggs, that will tell you that your chickens have got worms. There's a few treatments for that to get rid of the worms. Um, you can get apple cider. Um, you get that from your, your local vet, um, you know, your pet store, um, tax shops, they all sell it. You get a bottle of it, it's about seven or eight quid. You put three tablespoons of that into a, one of them big water butts, swish it round. Um, chickens drink it, it cleans them out. There is another way you can get yourself some pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. Um, another way of worming your chickens, you eat the seeds, it goes through them, it cleans them out. Um, this time of year though, I, I really should get a wood chip um, to put on me um, the, the, in the pen. I've already put the, um, the, the sawdust in the coop, um, put about three inches of it in it, double the insulation, it's obviously it's, as it gets colder. And the chickens feel the, the cold from the, the bottom up. And um, there's, a, there's a few things you've got to watch as well, because the chickens spend more time in the coop. Um, you've got to watch out for them. Bloody red mite. Now, I haven't got red mite, but a lot of people I know have got them, and they decimate the, the underside of the chickens. They, they chew at them and they turn the all the feathers start falling off and they all get red all up the backsides and everything. So, right, it decimates them. So if you can get this uh, red mite powder, it's expensive. I was lucky, I was given a big bucket of it. It's about 60, 70 quid bucket of it. And um, what I do is sprinkle it into the nest boxes. I actually covered the old pen in it, to be quite honest with you, uh, to get rid of the red mite. But I haven't got red mite no more, um, and I don't want it. It's an honorable thing. You know if you got it, as soon as you're going to start messing about with your chickens, you start itching, and they're so tiny you can't see them. And they're horrible, they really are. Uh, I dread ever getting them back, so I take very, I'm very cautious what I put into into my pen. It's going, it got goes into my pen because the, the horrible things. Um, but yeah, the red mite powder gets rid of them all. Um, chickens also, like I said, I think I mentioned there, I didn't mention. Chickens do like meat. Uh, don't give them um, chicken. They will eat chicken, but don't give them chicken, uh, you know. Um, they'll eat cat food, dog food. Um, they'll eat all the scraps off your table. They'll eat anything, really, chicken. Um, what you eat, they'll eat, and um, they'll thank you for it. They'll eat weeds, scraps, um, anything. So, you know, they give them little treats, um, croutons every now and again I give them. Um, soak them in, uh, in lard um, where I've, I've done bacon and I just put the lard on the, the croutons and yeah, it's got a little bit of fat in it, it, it all helps um, what else, we, oh as I was saying if you've got a, a chicken and it's got its head and its shoulders and its tails down and it's all on its own and it's looking miserable, it's probably got 24, 48 hours 
it's a golden it's gonna die chickens do that they just die i seen one run across my mate's farmyard and it just fell over and i thought oh what's up with that dead who's running and then just stopped and died i thought what the hell so you know uh, it's not um it's not a, a, a big step from a chicken when it's head in its own she's feeling sorry for itself but it's gonna fall over i've seen it happen um, but there is a cure and um, what you do you get a big bucket of water um, you want warm water you know um, baby temperature where you put your elbow in if it burns your arm it's too hot you want it just right you just like the goldilocks sort of thing for what um, for bathing a baby and then what you do you get some epsom salts maybe five six tablespoons of epsom salts to tip it into the bucket dissolve it into the bucket now here's a disclaimer now for 99 percent of you i don't have to to say this but for that one percent you know you sometimes you guys worry me chickens are not fish they don't breathe underwater so when you put the chicken in the bucket you keep its head above the water everything else you want it submerged and for five minutes you want to just wash that water all over the chicken underneath it you want to wash it around its head here all down its back everywhere underneath its belly and um, don't forget underneath its chinny chin chin <laughs> she's loving that and um do that for five minutes pick the chicken out put it on the floor watch after 15 minutes watch that chicken it'd be running around the pen like all the rest of them I sometimes do them all one after the other and just give them a bath in the Epsom salts and it really does pick them up this time of year but I'm a bit, um, bit I, I, what I really want is uh, some wood chip to, to put in the pen so the, the, the feet are clear you know they're not getting cold because chickens get cold from the bottom up wherever the wherever they're perched so that's why you put a lot of um, you double the insulation in the, 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 the pen uh, again we've got problems I've noticed um, over the last four months it's been very noticeable on my plot I've not heard so many birds I've not seen so many birds I put food in the feeders and normally every every two day every, every two days I'm topping the filling the feeders back up it's been three weeks and there's still food in the feeders uh, the, the the songbirds have gone very quiet um, what people don't realize is that bird flu is everywhere there's birds dropping out of it all over the show um, I've seen places where you would see thousands of birds that I've seen hardly any birds um, it's really really worrying that and again your chickens need to be protected from them if one of your chickens gets that bird flu then every bird in the bloody neighborhood is going to end up losing its life and um, DEFRA won't let you keep chickens if they're infected with bird flu so everybody on the allotments would lose the birds so everybody has to make sure that the birds are not allowed out this time of year on the allotment we've got biomats and all those pens so you're walking through uh, in, and no one else can go in except for yourself so follow them rules but yeah i've noticed a max um difference in the the, the birds coming to the feeders there's not so many guys so yeah worrying times for the birds anyway let's move on um, a friend of mine come up to me the other day says hey Max, i've got this age you want it he says remember that thing what i what, what i asked you to help me with i said well i've got a new one he says you can have this one here come and have it come and get it i said well let me show you what i bought what 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 what, what, what he's given me well guys um one of my friends up the allotment there he says uh Max, he says remember that old strummer that was having trouble getting going he says i've gone and bought a brand new one he says you know the one what you got started i says yeah he says uh would you want it i says why am i getting rid of it he says not wrong with it he says no so i can't get it going i said listen i says it's dead simple he said well i've already bought it i've already bought a new one so if you want this you can have it so i said yeah okay i'll take it off your hands and i'm gonna whack some wire in it i'll get it going in a minute and show it you're working but can't believe he's he's give it away it needs a strap and i know where there's a load of these straps so yeah we cracked it <laughs> buttercup stuffed her face 
got a lick in her chops. She's been fighting again. She's always fighting. She's got a scratch on her eye there. Little bugger. I need to get some drops for them. And more money. But yeah, first first time since this week we've had sunshine. Look at that. That ain't gonna last, I tell you. Ooh, look at them clouds over there. No wind, so they'll stay over there for now. Right, anyway, I'll be back in a minute when I get it going. Oh, guys. All it needs is uh, some wire sticking in there. What a result, but a cup. Let it shook over for a minute. Oh, it's stalled. That's because of the choke. But yeah, do you want this, Mark? Of course I want it. Not wrong with it. He seems to think there is, but a nice bit of kit there. So there you go. What's it called? Uh, Shindawaya 230. Ooh, two stroke. Can smell that petrol. Mmm, lovely. Used to have, all my bikes used to be two strokes. Right, anyway, I'll get it going again. And uh, let it run for a bit more, and then we'll put some some wire in it. I don't know where I'm going to put it. <laughs> I'll find somewhere. So what I need to do to get this so I can get it working is to unscrew that screw there, but it's so tightly screwed on. How the hell they tightened it on, I don't know. But um, once I can undo that screw, I can thread the wire, and uh, I can put it back on there. Other than that, just get a replacement. So I might have a trip to B&Q tomorrow to see if they've actually got something I can use. It's a, it looks like a 8mm screw. I've got WD-40 in there at the moment. I'm just trying to loosen it up. And uh, I've got Buttercup lurking. <laughs> yeah. So it might cost me a few quid this to get it to get it um, sorted. Then again, it might cost me nothing. Um, if I can undo it, what I was thinking is uh, making like three prongs on a, a socket, welding them up, sticking them in, and then turning it around. I think that's the easiest way to get it get a grip of it, undo it, and then don't cost me nothing then. But we'll figure it out. Still, an older strimmer works. You just need to get the head undone so I can put sort the wire out. Anyway, we'll come back to this. But well, what do you want for nothing? That's what I say. Yeah, strimmer. The only thing wrong with it, as I can see, is unscrewing the the head of the um to get the put the wire in. So what I'm going to do, I, I've got carpal tunnel in my fingers, so I have struggled, can't get a grip of it. Now, if I can get someone with a grill and hands to undo it, fine. I've, I've put some WD-40, it's not shifted it. I've got another idea which I'm going to use, I think I explained it, shown you in the clip. That's if this ain't the corrupted clip that I was to show you. But, um, all it needs is the, the wire putting in it and the strim is working fine. I said, shown him, I said, yeah, I said, it starts first time, why do you want to get rid of it? He says, oh, I've got a brand new, and my, my missus bought me a brand new, and I went, my missus bought me a brand new strimmer. However, the one I've got, my Eco, I wouldn't, wouldn't let, lend that one out, but I'm thinking of uh, putting some wire in that and then lending it for people who haven't got a strimmer and they can't do the pot. So I'll lend it to them, but they're going to have to buy their own bloody petrol, because I'm not paying for petrol for, the, for them and and pay for my car. I don't understand why it's 20%, 20 pence dearer for um, a litre of um, diesel than it is for petrol. I'm paying 180 for a, one pound 80 for a, a litre of um, diesel and everyone who's got a petrol are paying one pound 60 or one pound 58. What's that? What's that all about? Why is it, why is it almost 20 odd pence cheaper? Um, petrol it's easy to make diesel I just don't get it I, I just know that these people these these petrol um, 
petroleum companies are ripping every bugger off and um, it will come back to Arton because if no one can afford it then no one, they're not going to get any profit at the end of it because no one would be able to pay for it so they'll be losing out and it's, it's, it serves them self right for being greedy talk about greed unbelievable anyway yeah so strimmer I couldn't believe it I got a nice gift for that and I'll make good use of it I'll, I'll lend it out to everyone else they always ask me can I borrow your eco and I got not a chance <laughs> that is one thing I will not lend out but um, yeah I'll, be, I'll lend that sort of strimmer out for anyone who needs it anyway I'm going to move on to this last clip and it's um, basically um, it's a lot, it's, I'm going to take you around some fisheries and the canal it's a canal different parts of the canal and what I'm doing I'm checking it out to see whether it, uh, it's accessible to do some pike fishing and uh, we, we go we, we, we do round monsoon we check monsoon out um, we, we do Old Trafford we do the Cornbrook Arm we do um, Dame Road um, off Chester Road um, I forget what it's called it's called Earlham is it Ermstead? Earlham I always get mixed up between it's down Ch it's Fred, uh, Chester Road anyway Dame Road you're going to see some of these um, places and you're also going to see at the end of the the, the video a place it's the canal no, the, the canal at this particular part of the arm no longer exists of the canal except for one part and um, in Salford people know it as a secret canal it has got another name I will explain the name to you but in the first clip you're going to see um, something happened um, I used to work um, in um, Eke, well it's more Monson I used to walk down the canal every morning to go into work and every night I was coming back and this particular night um, well, I'll tell you the story in the video so check this out and we'll be back after that well we're on the Bridgewater Canal this is all bank I've come down here to see whether it'd be worth doing a bit of um, spinning for the pike now this is one of my favourite places along here for catching good roach. See where the, um, the roots of the trees are there, they are the best places to fish. Anything overhanging and, um, or anything like the weeds in the water, old fish. Looks like someone's uh, got a spinner over there stuck in the tree, nice spinner as well. No, I mean, actually it's not a spinner, it's a plug. I don't know if you can see it there. Be right in the centre of the picture, dangling down. Used to work down here. Every morning used to walk down here, and some mornings I walk this way um, on this side of the bridge. And other mornings I walk along the bridge. Anyway, this particular evening I was coming back from work, and normally I would walk through that entrance there, but I decided to walk through the canal bridge here, and. Actually, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I heard this splash and I thought, hmm, interesting, what's that? So, rather than come this way, I come that way. Anyway, over here are all old people's homes, mainly for the old people. And um, what had happened was, this old bloke, what I thought had just fallen in the canal, um, was in the canal going, but bobbing up and down anyway. Managed to grab hold of him and pulled him out. And I sat him down on the, the fence here. And I went, I turned around and went looking for help in these houses here. Next minute I heard badush. Turns around, the old bugger jumped back in. Now just here, people don't know, but there's railings in the water. And he jumped back in and he cut himself and he was, cut, he was absolutely pumping blood everywhere. Anyway. Like the idiot I was, I jumped back in again <laughs> and uh, pulled him out. This time I grabbed hold of him and took him with me to these houses over here. Now you can imagine they're all old people, so I knocked on this door and this old woman come to the door. I says, uh, I'm covered in blood, this old bloke's covered in blood. I said, "Can you have you got a phone to phone an ambulance? Anyway, she quickly shut the door. I must have terrified at death. Anyway, this guy come come out and I told him, I said, can you phone an ambulance? Anyway, he did that. He phoned an ambulance. 
the ambulance turned up, took him away. I told the ambulance, says, look, he's trying to kill himself. He jumped in here. Just here it was. And there's like railings in the water, all barbed wire and all sorts of stuff. And um, I told the, the ambulance what he'd done. And anyway, he had walked away, jumped on the bus. Now, by this time, I was absolutely covered in blood. So you can imagine me going up, jumping on the bus, going home. And everyone looking at me. Um, there was a big thing to try to find out who I was uh, to thank me. I never, I never, I saw it in the in the in the newspaper, but I couldn't be mithered. But yeah, I pulled an old bloke out of here. Now just up there, where all them, all these bushes hanging over, it's perfect for for pike. I've had pike up to fifteen pound along that stretch there. Some beautiful fish. Like I say these these wides here are oh, some nice roach. Um, the best way to fish it is to to lie on the bottom. It can be quite deep. In fact, this uh, this area is this part of the canal was the first place I caught a fish on the canal. Um, just a bit further up the around the bend, um, there's a place called it's called the Umpback Bridge in um, in Bar I think it's in, it's Barton. Yeah, Barton, and um, right next to the the black the Black Boy Pub. And it's the first place I caught, I caught a blind, if you can believe it, a blind rud. It was both eyes, it was blinding both eyes, yet I caught it, it was absolutely amazing. Big fish as well, about 10 ounces. But all along here, in the summer months, it's fantastic for roach. And some nice bream and tench along here. Yeah, railway goes over there. But um, some, some nice fish along here. But uh, this is a good area for catching pike. As you can see, there's, there's a plug over there in the tree. All along there, you're going to see plugs. One for sorrow, two for joy, magpies. And well, this is one of my hunting grounds. This is where I like to fish when I do fish. And uh, yeah, people can sit here and watch you. <laughs> but this is a this is a top. This is a really good spot here. So if you ever in Barton. You come to this point here, you come round, the up bridge is over here, you come round here, come down here, this road. You can park up. This is the place you want to be fishing, all right? Remember that up back bridge you was talking about? It's down there. Now this is the boat yard. Where would, where would you be? It's between Echo, well, the Unback Bridge at Eccles, I call it, but it's more Monson. All the way along here, all the boats all rolled up. It's a perfect place for catching, catching here, just right against the boats you want to fish. But this is a particular good spot to fish here. Right at the, the gates of the boat yard. See where that tyre is on that boat there, right in the centre of the picture. You can get a float to that point and you lay on the bottom with liquidised bread and fishing flake over the top of it. You catch uh, bream every chuck. It's absolutely it holds a lot of bream this this particular this bay here. But all the way along here, uh, we have matches um, from time to time. And um, we go all the way along, all the way down to the Dutton Arms down there. Again, this is another cracking place for catching pike. So yeah, two two fantastic spots for the, for catching fish. But just there, where that where that tire is in the water there. So come pull the camera back out a bit. So that's where we are, looking at the boat the yard. So where I am now, you put your box down here and you fish to where that tyre is there and you will absolutely bag up with the bream. I mean, bream go to three, four pounds. There's some good tension here. A lot of roach, tons of perch. You know, it's got a mix, mix, a um, lot of good fish in here, but uh, the bream, uh, that's where you're going to catch bream. So when you draw your pegs when you're on the matches, this is where you want to be, just here or just on the opposite side here. Two fantastic pegs to fish in a match, if you ever get the chance, the opportunity to fish them. 
anyway, like I say, just down there is the Umpback Bridge, what I was talking about um, two minutes ago. Yep, a lot of people live in these uh, boats all through the year. In fact, so there you go, folks. <laughs> Someone's got a chair there. All right, put the chair in storage, probably. Nope. But yeah, all the way along here, if you fish right up tight up to the boats, you'll catch fish all day. Uh, pinky, um, this time he earns squat, bloodworm jokers, uh, emp liquidized bread over bread punch. You'll catch all the way along here, but if you want to catch steady, you want to get some chop worm and fish worm. You'll get a mix of everything. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you this. This is uh, another one of these haunts I like to fish on the canal. So this is the Manchester Ship Canal all the way down here. A couple of swans there. Used to swim in here years when I was a kid. Used to jump in off Trafford Bridge and swim all the way down here. There is um, steps from in different places where you can get out. So it's not as if it's... Um, I wouldn't advise you swimming in it though. What we're looking at here, this is um, the tram stop at Frostle's Nest. Just park my car there. We we'll want to show you. It's up here. This is where I used to come fishing. You can still come fishing. This is the Cornbrook Arm, uh, right next to Frostle's Nest. This is the Bridgewater Canal. I can't believe they've actually blocked. They've actually put a fence there to stop you getting further down. But you can get over the other, the other side. So, this is where I spent most of my childhood along here. Along this arm. These wides here. Now this is a phenomenal place for catching roach and chub, uh, bream, pike. Pike is absolutely abundant here. You can really bag up on the pike along this stretch. But um, this is where I caught a bag of roach I'm never ever going to catch ever again. Uh, there was between two. They were like, well, pound and a half up to two and a half pound. They were monsters literally monsters all the way to, and when i caught them see where this tree is here i was fishing from that bank and i was fishing probably oh i'd say just over halfway from the bank um, in the wides in the deepest part fishing um liquidized bread uh, crushed hemp over bread flake and worm and it was a roach and we're talking dog big dog roach absolutely fantastic i must have caught 80 pound of fish that day and they were all roach and best day i ever had catching roach a little bit further up i've had 100 pound bags of bream up there um, but all along this stretch it's full of pike and i thought i'd just come along here and just weigh it up because i might have come down with a spinner and um go over me old aunts and see if I can catch a few nice pike. Biggest pike he ever caught was out of this stretch. A little bit further up, I'll take you to it in a moment. Um, but the biggest, biggest pike I've had out of this bit here was um, 23 pound. Absolutely awesome. And just above us is like the, the trams, tram line here. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh, I'd better duck under. I'm not going to try and climb over and end up myself in hospital oh you see what they've done there so you can actually get through there they've put an hole in the fence so, can, so a fisherman can actually get through and go fishing a bit further up the arm but this is called the cornbrook arm at frostles frostles nest and uh just over the other side like i say there's the ship canal 
can actually get day trips on the, on the ship canal. <laughs> Speaking of devil, there you go. I don't know how much it is. But you can... Uh, yeah, for Iro. So you can actually take a trip up the ship canal. It's still used as well, this canal. I mean, you get, you get some big ships coming up the canal, but they can't, they can't, this is about, the, well, this is, they can't come any further than um, Trafford Bridge now because it doesn't swing round, unfortunately. But all I say, looking at all this, 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 none of this was here. All these buildings, what you see now, there were none of this um, 10 years ago. What it is, it's all waterside property, it's worth a fortune and uh, that's what what the banking on. There used to be palm olive across here, um, used, used to, um, Dad used to work there for, for a time, used to, we, the house was out of boxes of soap and all sorts of different soap powders and you name it, but it's all gone now. But yeah, there's a ship canal for you. Absolutely awesome. You go that way, you go into Manchester. And like I say, that way, you're going into Old Trafford. Well, we'll take you up to Frostle's Nest now. Uh, it's only up, up the up the top there. But um, it is an absolutely awesome place to go fishing. So I thought we'd throw it in for you. So this is Frostle's Nest Bridge. I have many of um, happy occasions at times on this bridge, fishing down below it. I mean, you can go down that ramp there and you can fish all the way along this here. Uh, down here, all along that edge there, full of bream, solid with pike, all the way along this edge. If you go this way, oh. <laughs> if you go this way here, you're going into where, well, there's Old Trafford, hallelujah, the sacred ground itself, right in front of us. But um, all the way along this stretch, this is where we used to fish matches um, on the, it's called Cornbrook Arm. Um, there's a memorial, <laughs> I think it's, it's a little bit different than what it used to be. It used to be a painted one. See this thing in front here, that was called the mural and it was a painting. And now they've stuck a bloody big, um, one of these electronic things up there. But um, all along here, was happy days uh, fishing um, pike the, this is where I caught my biggest pike here 29 pound underneath these or just this um, putting a, put a plug in from over there cast over them bloody hell 40 at the bottom but there's all sorts in there if, I don't know you can't even see in the, you can't really see but there's a tire the site is truck tire there in the water buried all along here you've got um, fencing you've got mesh you've got all sorts there's more spinners lost here on this stretch than anywhere else but um if you were to go to the next bridge uh, where where the all old ground air united is there's a wide there and that is where you catch uh, oh my god that's where you catch some really big bream uh, i fished a I fished in a, a um an open there um, and I was next to Bob Nudd now Bob Nudd's a world champion and I I spanked him I am I shown him how to catch and there was nothing he could do about it I ended up with about 45 pound of beautiful bream and roach but um, this is this is the this is the sacred place this is where I spent all my youth mainly jumping off this bridge and no I'm not going to jump off it now <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, just look at this here, this, um, this, this outline of the sitter. This was none of this. What you see now here, there was nothing, it was all just flat. Uh, got the, the railway this side as, it as well. But if you want to come on, walk up this, you can walk all the way up into Manchester by walking along this, um, this path here on this side of the the canal you can't do it from that side you could do at one point but you can't do no absolutely wonderful well i think someone committed suicide there and that's what that lamps them is for the one thing people don't do is mess with things like that um in in salford but yeah this is the this is frostle's nest frostle's nest bridge god it brings back some fantastic memories here for me so does that um 
football ground over there. I spent many, many a Saturday afternoon watching United, watching Stevie Coppel and Brian Robson and all them lot back in the day. But this is an awesome part of the canal and it's um, underestimate. People don't realise that there's a fantastic head of bream and roach in this, this um, uh, train going past in this part of the canal anyway i'm going to head off now um there is a few other spots on the canal that I, I might show you but um this one here is absolutely awesome god frostles nest bridge unbelievable can't believe that the arseholes i'm sorry about the language guys but i can't believe that they've actually painted they've tagged the bloody bridge muppets in fact they tagged all the walls <laughs> unbelievable so there we go, one last look at the bridge and we're out of here. So this is the Dane Road. You can actually park your car, but you've got to be very careful where you're parking it. Good places underneath the bridge here, but just down there where you can see the boats, that's Dane Road boat yard. And you can get really big fish down there. I mean, really big fish. All along the here is perfect for, for pipe fishing. When I say all the way along, I mean all the way along, and it's solid, and I mean solid with bream and roach and everything. Anyway, let's take you down to the the place that I want to show you. So what you're looking at here is Dane Road. This is this is where you catch some beautiful pike here. Stick a bung out with some dead bait, fire it across there, just off the bank. As soon as it hits the water, you'll see the bung flying away. There's them them geese there. Yeah, just here, um, you, is where they, 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 they got um, like canoes and what have you, they race up and down the ca uh, canal. But all along this stretch here, you can get some really, really big pike and there's a lot of roach and, and bream in this stretch as well. Don't forget the carp, um, there's some big carp all the way along this canal. The biggest up to 32 pound i've caught i've caught many of them um caught some monsters along over the years but this day uh, you can park your car just here got to be careful don't get too close to the canal or you end up swimming uh, i wouldn't park there because that's where they actually um where they come out in the in the lycra um pants and i tell you some hot girls in there um but all along here it's a fantastic place and I'll be coming down with a couple of plugs and giving it a bash in the next week or two. I'm just coming down to see what it looks like at the moment. It looks pretty good. So there we go. This is Dane Road. I like to say, as soon as you turn, come down the ramp, just be careful because it's very narrow, these, this road, and um, make sure you don't go racing up it. Otherwise, you could probably end up losing the front of your car. But yeah, there we go. One last look at it. I would say the best place to actually to bag up is just here, around bushes. Right, onwards and upwards, let's get out of here. I'll take you to one more place. So this is another part of the canal. Waters meet just up there. All along here, you're going to hit a big pike and um, big carp. This is... Um, Old Trafford this, more of them bloody geese down there, so be careful. You come over this way. Right in front of you, you got Kellogg's. And everybody who's a fisherman in Manchester knows about Kellogg's and the big pike and carp up there. But that's where it is, just around that bend. The hot water pipe, absolutely awesome place to fish all along here. I've won many a match on this um, this length. Anyway, I thought I would show you that. So let's knock it on the head now and head back. But yeah, this is um, this is Trafford, and that there is Kellogg's, right where the smoke's coming off. That's Kellogg's, taking you to one more place on the canal in fact this canal doesn't exist anymore um, some people call it the secret canal 
Um, it's the, the, it's the, the Leeds Liverpool. Um, it's where it cut off that went that way into Manchester, and it's built on top of it. And um, about a mile that way, uh, again they cut it off, and that's where it ends. Oh, Kingfisher there. But here, believe it or not, it's fish in, in here. And people come down and they fish it, kids especially. There's a lot of tyres and everything in here, as you probably can see. They pulled, they pulled over 30 tonne of um, tyres out of this place years ago. But, yep, yeah, it's, uh, believe it or not, this has actually got some nice perch and uh, roach and there's all pike and all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, the, the, it's all reed beds all the way along there um, right until you get to the next bridge then it opens up again like this but yeah this is what they call the secret canal I used to work just here behind this uh, a place called uh, Britannia Fort Trucks Engineering they used to uh, weld um, you know do all the welding for them and in the dinner times used to come down here and do a bit of fishing you know, many time I'd caught some really nice fish yeah, so this is, uh, you don't want to come down here on your own. I mean, I'm, anyone tries to jump me, it's God help them. But um, yeah, uh, come down with a mate and you, you cracked it. We got a lovely little bit of canal, this. Not a lot of people know about it. But um, yeah, it's the, the Leeds Liverpool. Um, other people, lo lo locals call it the secret canal. There you go. I'm almost want to throw a rod in there and catch a couple of fish now. By the way guys, if you want to find the secret canal, um, if you come down here, this here is um, Langley Road at the bottom here, and this is Tarmac I think, uh, Tarmac's Contractors Plant Yard, you've got cameras and everything here, but I wouldn't park your car here really, I try and find somewhere else to park it, but I suppose you could park it. Um, if you've got a uh, blue badge, uh, you could put park it on the, the main road, but um, just down the bottom here is Langley Road. Um, that way is uh, Age Cross Cemetery. That, the opposite way, this way is um, going back into uh, to Salford. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that before we knocked it on the end. So there you go, guys. That's where we're going to be going fishing. I've been digging my me, me, me gear out, picking out what I'm, what I'm thinking do the business in a couple of weeks time i'm going to be up and down the arm cornbrook arm after them pike and um that'll probably get me back get me mojo back into uh, match fishing um i what got me interested was bumping into my mate um, he was pike fishing i pulled up and he says is this a ghost i'm seeing coming up the canal i said oh, oh, very funny he said where have you been mark said, everyone's asking where you are they've not seen you for over 12 months what the hell um, 12 months ago, I won my last match and I never went fishing again. I won seven matches back to back and then I just stopped fishing. I just lost the, the passion for angling. Anyway, the passion for angling now has come back, so I'm going to give it a go. And um, like I say, and you'll never lose the, the skill. The skill is just it's just there anyway, so I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to get in there and catch some big pike anyway since uh, it's Monday today and I couldn't get the video up yesterday I've got a clip here I was on um, the antiques fairs um, in Lee um, yesterday and I got a couple of bargains let me show you these bargains oh, and I got one of, the, one of my dream coins what I've been after for a while as well let me share them with you Hi guys, well, these are what I've been buying today. I bought a few other coins, but um, these these ones um, I bought um, at the Antiques Fair. And, well, I've got this uh, Australian Koala. I think it's 2000... I can't see the date on it. Wow, hang on. I think it's 2018. That's uh, an ounce of silver. Absolutely fantastic. I bought this Isle of Man 50p uh, 1983. Christmas 50p. I've got two of these. I've got this is the AB. I've got the AC. 
and the AD, the, the, the eye cut will marks. I do need the double A, and then I've got all of these 1983s. Bought a couple of florins, um, an 1893 and a 1901. These are veil florins. The reverse is much better than the obverse on these. But like I say, these are sterling silver. Um, and then I, I bought this 2009. Um, set of coins i can't believe what i paid for this i said to the guy I said what do you want for this mate he went um seven quid that coin there cost me just on its own um a few years back about 45 50 quid it's a shield let's say this is this is a, this is a coin set so these are selling for about 70 quid, 60, 70 quid on eBay and I picked it up for seven quid. That's the best, that's the best deal. To, well, actually it ain't the best deal. The best deal is this uh, Mary. The, the camera doesn't do it justice. I can't focus in on her face properly. It is there, it's in proper detail, but the, the plastic's not letting me do it. Um, turn it round. This is in full flan. It's got full flan on it. No nibbles out of it or anything. This coin is yeah what it says. Hundred and fifty quid. It's worth every penny of that. They're selling for about three four hundred quid on eBay. In half as good as condition as this one. So yeah, good result today. That's what we've been wasting his money on. I've got a few other coins, I will show you them in a moment. So the Queen Mary, I've been after that forever. And very rare, very hard to get hold of. And they like hen's teeth, and when you get them, you, when you see them, you've got to get them. And this lad, um, he did tell me he had one, and he said he'd bring it. Anyway, um, the Adlin, there was no Adlin. It was that price, and normally they're about three, in that sort of condition with a full flan, they're about three to four, maybe five hundred pound and I got a bargain, as you've seen how much it was and um, yeah the 2009 um, commemorative set, couldn't believe that, I said what do you want for that? He says oh give me seven quid for that, I looked at him, he says seven quid, it was in his hand and I had it in my pocket when he said seven quid, before he before he finished seven quid, it was I had it in my pocket and he had the money in his hand. They're selling for sixty, seventy quid on eBay, and it's, it's the fifty p in the in that thing there is the collectible thing. It it, didn't, it wasn't intended for circulation. It never went into circulation. This coin, so they only made about I'd say about ninety thousand of them. No, ninety thousand, ninety about, about eighty thousand. It might sound a lot, but trust me, in the coin world. That is nothing. That is absolutely nothing. And the, like I say, you can't buy. You can't get me your change. And if you if you want a coin collection, you need to have this particular coin in your collection. So you have to have the coin. And people pay just for that coin on its own. for the fifty p, the two thousand nine fifty p. They pay forty fifty quid. It all depends on condition. And as you saw, that was in a bunk set. So that's in pristine condition. You want the, the, the other 50p which comes in that set, the Kew Garden, that's selling for about 170 to 200 pound now. I think I've got 14 of them, maybe 15. I forget how many it is now, I've lost count. But I do collect them when I see them. And um, the, the, like I say, investment coins basically. But um, the, the Queen Mare is absolutely awesome. I could not believe um, the detail, you can't see the detail because of the cover that it's in the cover i need to set, sort that out and get it in a new new flip and um, that's what protects the crime but uh, the, the the face the detail on queen mary's face is absolutely awesome and i put it up there in the three to four hundred pound mark that's how much it's worth i think it's worth that if you go on to ebay and you type it and you see some of the coins there the 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 half the flans missing where they've been clipped now cl clipping the coins where Back in the day, the um, peasants used to clip a little bit off the coin and they 
put it in a little pouch and once they got clipped enough of it off and they melted it down and they had a nice piece of silver. If you got caught doing that, you'd probably be hand, hanging, swinging from um, an hanging tree. You know, they'd lynch you for it. Um, or, or, or worse, to chop you up into four quarters and send you around the country. But um, most of the most of the hammered coins are all been clipped. Um, it was only um, when Queen Anne come to to power that they they put um, a reeded edge around the coin to, so people couldn't. So you, you would know if it was being clipped, and if it was clipped, then the, the coin would be worthless. So it's around Queen Anne um, who, who brought the, um, the, I think it was Queen Anne, um, who brought that the reeded edge around the coin. And every every coin since now has got the reeded edge, yeah, like like the ribs all the way around the coin. Some of them have got writing, mainly the crowns. Anyway, I'm waffling out. Anyway, I'm going to try and get off. I'm going to try and get this video up. I'm, I tried all last, I tried for four hours last night to try and get this video up. Now I've got to go and do all this editing again. If one of the clips doesn't appear when I'm talking about it and I say, well, you know, this is it, let me show you, and it doesn't appear, that is because that was the error. However, there is another clip and I think it is the error and it's a, it's a four potato reveal. So I'm leaving that off for now. I have got other footage of me doing that reveal, so I'll probably do that again. But that's it. Buttercup's falling asleep. You probably have all fallen asleep, and I'm falling asleep. But before I fall asleep, I'm going to try and get this video edited and back up. 72% 70, I got it um, to, to upload to last night, and then it stopped. So it's one of two, two videos um, where the error is. If I can find what it is, I'll have it up later on. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Let me let me hear your thoughts on this bird flu. Um, I think there's a few birds on my feeder at the moment. It's a blue tit and there's a, there's a cold tit on my feeder at the moment. Um, but there should be hundreds of birds on my feeders. Really should. I've not seen any, any jackdaws. I've seen no pigeon or wood pigeons all the wood pigeons are gone normally there's a there's about 40 50 wood pigeons on here not a single one of them um it's uh it's worrying anyway until next time you stay safe thanks for watching and goodbye for now